In this video, we are going to deep dive into some lesser known debugging techniques for React custom and default hooks. We would also learn how to get rid of those pesky unwanted re-renders. We'll also see how we can run React on debugging mode right in our VS Code editor. And finally, we are going to learn how we can use React trick mode to catch a lot of these bugs way early in the process. So let's jump right into it after this intro. Hey there friends, welcome to this third video on this series on web debugging. If you are new here, my name is Shivalik. I'm a software engineer based in Germany and on this channel, my job is to make you a solid 10 programmer. So let's get right into it. Well, first thing first, I am assuming you already have React DevTools installed in your browser, whether it be Chrome or Edge or Safari. Once you have DevTools installed, you can go to any React application, right click and go to inspect, and you should be able to see a component and a profiler tab. So once you have DevTools installed, let's jump into our first example. So here we have a very simple user card component, which has two inputs. And if you open this component in the inspector, you'll be able to see we have two states in the hook. And if I go ahead and update the values, let's say Tim and London, you're able to see these values gets updated. But when you look at the dev tools, it just says hooks and all the hooks used and their values, which is not very verbose and looking at it does not give us an idea what controls what. But thankfully with this magic wand tool with just one click, you can instruct react to parse the hook and find out the variable name and show it here. So now it immediately is more verbose. We know which state hook is for what. Now, when it comes to custom hooks, you can take things even one step further by using a react hook called use debug value. So let's see how it works in an example. So let's go and uncomment the next component called user status component. And if we jump into the code of it, we can see this is a very simple component which calls a custom hook called use status for which you can see the code here, which does nothing fancy, just uses some logic to return true or false. And we render this value here. So now if we jump to our dev tools quickly, we can go to the respective component. And now we can see we have a status hook. And when you open it, we can see the value of the status. Now, if you wish to pass a little more information about your custom hook so that your debugging is easier, you can go inside your custom hook and use use debug value from react and pass any value inside it. Now, if we go to the inspector and expand the status hook, we can see the value here on page refresh. When the value changes, we can again go and see the correct value being printed. Now this use debug value takes two parameters. The first one is a value and the second one is a function. So you can easily do something like this where you have a date object and you instruct it to convert it into a date string. Now let's save this and go back to our debugger once again and we can see it's printing online and the current date. Now before we learn more about how to fix re-rendering issues in React and also my favorite strict mode, let me show you how we can set up debugger right inside our VS code so that we don't need to go to the browser that often. So here, as you can see, I'm using the term inside VS Code to run my application and it's a wide app which is running on port 5173. So let's stop the server. Let's go to run and debug and now we are going to select web app Chrome here and we are going to leave this configuration exactly the same with only two modifications which is the port number for our application as we just saw it was running in port 5173 and also the web root which you can see here our main application is in the source folder so let's just do slash src and let's save this. So now we can go to run and debug and click on this play button right on top, which would run our application right here. So now if I split this in side by side view, we can see the browser and also our VS code. And now let's go ahead and run our application. So for that, I'll go to terminal once again and just do yarn dev which will spin our application in the 5173 port so this current project react demo is actually on a different route so let's quickly go to that route which is hash slash react so this is where our code is now just to demonstrate how you can pause on our debugger let's go to one of these components so user card component is the one on top and let me add a debugger right here and now every time this component updates for example when i press a button it stops in the debugger and we can see all the values and we can step through or play and basically debug our application right inside VS Code. One quick thing to note here though, if you watch my previous video, we learned how we can use the conditional debugging in Chrome. You can do the same thing in VS Code as well. You just need to right click on your breakpoint and go to edit breakpoint. And now you can set any kind of condition and that way your debugger only stops when this condition is triggered. Now next, we are going to look at the most infamous React performance related bug, which I'm pretty sure all of you 
you have paste which is react re-renders in our code let's uncomment the re-rendered component component and here if you jump onto the dev tools you can see we have a re-rendered component which is the main container which has two children which is component b and the component c now if you want to see if a component is unnecessarily re-rendering you can go to view setting here and click on highlight update when component renders now when i trigger some event on one of these components you can see the parent component and both the children's highlight so we can clearly see here the re-rendering issue which is happening here another way to investigate unwanted re-renders if your component is a little more complicated than this example is to go to the profile tab and now we can start a record session then we go ahead and do some action so for this example we clicked the button five times and then we can come back and stop the recording now in this flame graph when i click on re-rendered component you can see it has rendered five times now you can also step through these commits which are nothing but react events which has been triggered you can see that the other components like component b has also rendered five times so let's fix it let's go to our re-rendered component code let's further expand component b and component c so that we can see what is happening inside component b as you can see from the ui has nothing but just a simple label so re-rendering this makes no sense component c might be re-rendered because you are triggering an event on it now i know at this point you might be tempted to memoize these two components so let's just do that and see what happens so I went ahead and wrapped these two components in a memo and now if we come back to the example and click you can see hooks demo does not re-render anymore but still the parent component and the child re-renders so clearly the problem still exists in some form so let's go back into our code remove the memo and try to fix the problem at its root if we take another closer look at our code we can see the on click functionality and also the state doesn't need to be at the parent so let's select this and move that to the component where we would use it let's delete the props which we have passed in here and also let's remove the props which we have passed from the parent component so now if we go ahead and save this and let's jump back into our debugger and just like that we have fixed the re-rendering issue and now you can see very well when we click on a component only the one with changes is highlighted in the ui and while thinking about this video on react it made me wonder maybe you can react on something too maybe something like the thumbs up button or the subscribe button right below if you haven't already so coming to the very end we have the user cards component so we have a story state which is initialized with this array of objects and then we pass that values inside the stories prop once you go to the user cards component you can see it doesn't do much it takes the stories array which we passed adds another object to it and then just renders it now looking at this seemingly innocent component are you able to spot any bug right away well to show exactly how this component behaves when we re-render let me go ahead and make some changes to the code so here you can see i have added a use state is hover and also a option to set it and we have added mouse pointer events to toggle this value whenever your mouse enters or leaves this component and just so that we can see it better we have a background so now if we go back to our code you can see every time i enter this basically the component just keeps on creating more copies of this now i'll be honest i did not see this bug just by looking at the code because if you refresh this page and look at this initial render this is exactly how the output was expected to be so it was quite easy to overlook this bug but these kind of bugs become very easy to spot if we wrap our component with the react strict mode component so first let's go to our app and refresh it now let's go to the file where we have initialized our react code and wrap our component inside the strict mode component component sandwich now if we go back to our page and refresh it you can see on the very first render there is two create stories so just by looking at it we can see something was odd because if you look at the code we had initialized with two objects and then inside our code we have pushed one but in the ui we can absolutely see this getting rendered twice that is because in strict mode react renders your app not once but twice just to catch bugs like this now let's go back to the code and try to fix the issue you can see we are taking the values of stories storing it into items and you can see we are mutating the values of stories because once we store it into items and every time item changes it updates stories so the right way to use this probably would be to create a fresh copy of stories so let's just do stories.slice and just like that every time item re-renders it's a fresh copy of stories so let's go ahead and refresh our component and now you can see we have fixed the bug because now we know if the component has some faulty logic with re-render we would see at least two instances of create stories because we are in strict mode so there you go thanks for watching till the very end of this video if you learned something new or if i missed something let me know down in the comments below make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and check these videos videos out from this same series on debugging. See you next Monday.